our series. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about LPA's new product, Hospitality Insight. Uh, my name is Brendan Austin. I'm the director of the hospitality practice and the financial performance management practice at LPA Software Solutions. A little bit about LPA before we get started. Um, we've been around for about 18 years now. Uh, we are headquartered in Rochester, New York, but we have consultants that are spread out throughout the country. Um, we have over 400 clients um, that are active, um, and we add about 40 new uh, every year, um, and we have been consistently uh, since 2015. About 80% of our clients uh, do uh, follow on work with us, uh, which is it's a good statistics because our customers come back to us again and again and again. Uh, we do cover a lot of industries uh, within our, our our company, but hospitality is one of the, the core industries that we focus on. Uh, we do have partnerships with both IBM and Pitney Bowes. Um, we are a premier business, platinum business partner with IBM, uh, which is the highest uh, tier uh, partnership that you can get with IBM. And then we're uh, a Pitney Bowes partner as well. Um, that's for the location intelligence data uh, that we'll be talking about later. A little bit about our consultants. Um, all of our consultants are certified in the products that we implement. Uh, most of them have over 10 years of experience in both business and consulting. Um, a lot of our consultants do come from, on my team, come from the, uh, finance and, and accounting background. Um, so we, we understand your business, uh, we understand what the business users want in operations, um, and we can kind of translate into what needs to be built, um, you know, to support those business decisions that you need to make. A uh, little bit about what LPA can offer. Um, we can do everything from roadmap uh, development all the way to advanced um, analytics. So roadmap development is when you know you need to go somewhere, you, need, you know you need to re, uh, improve your reporting and your, your data structures, but you have no idea how to get there. LPA can come in and kind of pull everything apart, uh, do interviews with all of your executives and your operations and find out really what it is you need to report off of or what type of data you need to be collecting. Uh, we can help you then make steps um, that are achievable steps uh, to get to the point where you actually have got the data and you can report off of it and analyze it the way you need to. Um, we also do uh, data warehousing work. Uh, we do interface with a lot of the different tools that are out there. Um, business intelligence. Uh, we mainly work with Cognos Analytics, IBM Cognos Analytics. Um, but we can do everything from, you know, installation to training to uh, implementation, um, health checks, you name it, uh, with, with any of these products that we deal with. Uh, performance management uh, was mainly the planning analytics product, which we're going to be talking about today, uh, which, which is what Hospitality Insight is based upon. Um, so when we come in and do a project... We would come in and first do upfront training, uh, talk to your your users, um, and train the, who's going to be the administrator of the system or administrators, um, show you how to use the system. We would implement our Hospitality Insight Framework, uh, which is basically a starter kit um, for you guys to do uh, certain functions within hospitality, and then show you guys how you can then amend that um, or... Uh, further develop it, um, or we could do it as well, um, and, and load your data, uh, create the automated scripts to, to pull in data, etc. Uh, we would do all that for you guys, um, and then train you at the end as well uh, with what, what has been completed. And then our last practice is the advanced cognitive analytics, um, where you can get into the predictive modeling uh, that also includes... Uh, maybe pulling in weather data. Uh, we have an interface from the weather company that we can use. Um, and then we can also get the Pitney Bowes location intelligence information, which we'll talk about later in the presentation, um, specifically around the hospitality industry. Um, it's kind of, it's a unique um, offering that we have now. 
um, where we're combining the star information with location intelligence of our competitors. Um, we'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, we've been working with the hospitality industry for about nine years now. Um, and we have developed the Hospitality Insight Framework, um, uh, of which it includes uh, a predictive pricing optimization module, uh, which we could uh, implement. Uh, basically, we can look at data from the different uh, sources of information, rate shop, star, uh, your previous last year performance, uh, what your other competitors are, are advertising, and we can predict what the optimal price is to um, offer those rooms for, um, including you know, outside factors maybe like weather, maybe like events that are coming to the city, etc. Uh, we've done big data analysis, um, so loading millions and millions and millions of records into databases um, and consolidating those and reporting off of those. Um, this includes management dashboards. So we've done dashboards at different levels, uh, you know, maybe one for corporate, one for middle management, and one for the hotel managers themselves. I'll show you a little bit of an example of that. And then we've done a lot around same store sales, um, you know, comparable, non-comparable, uh, by market, um, and then looking at uh, items, you know, same day last year, um, you know, where we're looking at not uh, date for date, but day for day last year. Um, then we also bring in information for all of your your other departments within the hotel. So your restaurants, your golf sh uh, shops, uh, your spas, your parking uh, group, um, you know, all of those things all get kind of rolled up into the application and the data can come from multiple sources and roll up um, so you can see it in one one place. Um, if you go out to our website, um, we, we do have a couple of testimonials from the hospitality industry. They're pretty good videos. Um, uh, this is a kind of a high overview of what Hospitality Insight is. Um, it's really a framework that we've developed. So the three core tiers within that framework that we, we put in there is forecasting and budgeting, uh, financial reporting, and star data. Now, there are nine million other things that you could also include to, in it, um, and, and we have done various things for other customers, um, bringing in time clock information. Um, you know, bringing in hotel cash over short information, uh, banking information, etc. You know, we we can we can bring it in. The system is is agnostic really to what that source is. So as long as we can get at either a data file or a data feed, um, we can import the data directly into uh, the Hospitality Insight framework. Um, within the framework itself. It uses um, what if scenario modeling, which means I can go in and kind of play around with the data. I can create alternate versions of my forecast or budget um, and compare those versions together and decide which version I like the best. Um, and then whatever is in my sandbox um, is really only open to my view um, until I decide that I want to actually make it public. Um, so it's kind of a neat feature. You can go in and play with different scenarios and see how it affects your entire forecast or budget um, before actually submitting something. Um, this is all based on the IBM um, technology. So IBM is supporting the actual product standing behind it. Uh, so we do use the IBM Planning Analytics and Cognos Analytics platforms to build Hospitality Insight. Um, and with this, we can create uh, daily forecast, uh, daily reporting, daily sales reports, um, and also monthly ones. So the dailies can roll up to the monthlies. Uh, the mo monthlies, we obviously do the expense side, uh, forecasting and budgeting. Um, but what's neat about this product is the minute that information is either imported in or keyed in from the users from a forecast or budget perspective, it's automatically consolidated. You can look at um, you know, the roll-up of your company throughout the day if you want to and kind of see how things are progressing. You don't have to run external 
data sources or a calculation to get it to roll up. It's, it's all automatic. It's very easy uh, to use. Um, users typically can get trained in it within an hour or so uh, to log in, start filling out templates, and to kind of slice and dice their data. Um, you can access this for mobile devices. So uh, what I'll be showing you later is the web front end. Um, it is browser agnostic. So whether you're using an iPhone, an iPad, uh, you know, a netbook, um, whatever you want to use, you can get at the data and is read write. Um, so if I've got a report or something where I need to update a forecast or budget number, I can actually do that directly from my mobile device. Of course, that's depending on security and the security that you set up. Um, there is an, also a um, an on-premise uh, version um, as well as an in-cloud version. Uh, the pricing is very simple for the, the cloud version, which is what most of our customers are going with these days. Um, it's based on a per user per month basis. Um, and there are two types of users, either an administrator, which is a little bit more cost, um, or just a user. Um, and you know, if you're interested, we can get you pricing on, on uh, the number of users that you would be interested in. Um, so a little bit about um, some of our pa past and current hospitality clients. Um, we've, we've implemented the Hospitality Insight Framework uh, for most of these on this page um, uh, with, with great success. Um, all of these are using the, um, the IBM Planning Analytics back, back end um, to use their, um, uh, to do their management. Uh, a couple of them are using the Cognos Analytics um, business intelligence um, as well. So a little bit more about the features within this Hospitality Insight. Um, framework. So um, it gives you the ability to align uh, corporate ops around crit critical revenue and profitability targets. Um, so you can do top down, bottom up um, forecasting budgeting if you want to. Um, you can quickly adjust plans and resource allocations. Uh, most of our implementations of this uh, becomes driver base, whether it's CPOR, a number of covers, number of hours in the day, uh, percentage of revenue. Uh, we've we've developed about 35 different drivers um, that we can use on an account by account basis to determine what our forecaster budget is. And so, when you change those driver uh, amounts, uh, the the dollars automatically calculate with it, uh, which is which is neat because it's it's an easy way to adjust your forecaster budget, um, and so it's more dynamic. Um, since we're bringing in the day the information automatically from a lot of the systems, we can actually see a day to day comparison of budget to forecast to actual um, in the system, and we can see how you're doing month to date, quarter to date, year to date. Um, right there on the screen. And then we can also bring in um, information such as Rate Shop or Star to kind of gauge your performance with your competitors. Um, we've created uh, key performance indicator calculations based upon that Star data um, to show you what the index is of your hotel's uh, performance to Star. And then you can uh, also do your forecasting and expenses at, at different levels. So we can either do it at the daily level, the monthly level. Uh, you could uh, do it at the uh, a consolidated level. So if you wanted to do it at a regional level, you can do that and push it down. Um, and then there are a bunch of different rate uh, drivers that you can do your um, forecasting budgeting on by occupancy percent, daily rate, CPOR, you know, many different options there. And, and if there is something within Hospitality Insight that we haven't built yet, the, the beauty of this is it's, it's completely flexible. Um, a couple of screenshots of what Hospitality Insight kind of includes. Um, kind of in the middle of the screen, we've got a, uh, a dashboard of a regional level um, where we're showing the GOP, the OCC percent, the top, um, top hotels in that region, 
Um, down on the right hand side, we've got what's called an RSS feed, which is a news feed for the hospitality industry. And then kind of in the middle, we plotted out for those hotels, the total overhead expenses uh, forecasted for the year. And then anything that's on the screen, you can drill down on and get additional information. Um, there's also a workflow, which is the second uh, screen down below. Uh, when you log in, um, you can look at the forecast or budget process. You can find out which hotels or which managers or which RVPs have actually um, completed their forecast or budget or whether they're in review. There's a commentary that they can um, key in and tell them, you know, tell people where they are at in the process. You can accept it, reject it, um, etc. But it's a visual representation of kind of where they are. Um, the system also handles the security around that. So once I approve a budget or forecast, it's locked for that location. Um, the GM can't come in behind me and make any more changes um, once it's you know once it's locked down. Um, and then you know, like I said before, everything is instantly rolled up and consolidated um, for, you know, whether it's actual budget forecast, projection, what have you. When I input a forecast or budget, it automatically rolls up, up your hierarchy. Um, so if your properties roll up to a region and those regions roll up to the total, um, you know, it will automatically filter up those, those totals automatically. Um, so a couple of the other features, um, we talked a little bit about the predictive pricing optimization, big data, uh, management dashboards. Um, you know, we can bring in data from many different systems um, into Hospitality Insight. This is the Pitney Bowes uh, location intelligence information. So this is a new feature that we've added to Hospitality Insight. Uh, basically, what we've done is we've imported the star information for all of the hotels. Um, and then we've plotted out for the star comp set, the address uh, within the system. And then we brought in the Pitney Bowes information as an interface um, that shows you your hotel versus your competitors, um, what the features are of those competing hotels versus yours. Um, so whether it, your, your uh, comp sets got uh, a pool, uh, when the last time was renovated, um, where are the parking facilities in, you know, obviously you know for your hotel, but for your, your competing hotels. Um, and then we also plot their performance based upon star as well. So you can drill into an area. Let's say you've got a hotel in a particular star market that's not doing as well as your comp set. You can actually drill into that property on a map on the web uh, using this data, and you can see maybe your hotel has not been renovated um, in 10 years and the others that were, have just been renovated. Maybe that's why their occupancy is up or their, their rev par is up, um, or maybe it's a, your hotel is maybe in a higher crime area a little bit by a couple blocks than some of these other hotels. Um, so it, it gives you a lot of information kind of at your fingertips uh, using the Pitney Bowes uh, intelligence information um, integrated into the map, integrated with your star, and it's also integrated with your uh, index and your current um, you know forecast budget. And actuals. So it is a really powerful tool um, that, that a lot of people, you know, before this, they were cobbling things together. Um, they may take it to another group and, and, and get somebody to research the area or what have you. This is all um, right on the screen. Uh, the pricing optimization, this is a screenshot of the pricing optimization module that we've created. Um, of course, the format, we can do it any way you want. Uh, most of this modeling is, is based off of a, an Excel spreadsheet behind the scenes. You kind of set up the columns and rows uh, in the Excel spreadsheet, and then you publish it to the web. The system kind of takes over at that point and brings in the data and populates it. And I'll show you uh, a little bit later when we get to the demo kind of how that works and what it looks like. Um, but in this case, we brought in information from, I believe, seven different sources um, into one uh, report. 
Um, so for as far as the user is concerned, they're going to one location um, and they're pulling up this information. But the system has brought all this information together um, into one source behind the scenes. So you can look at a day, um, day of the week and date, um, total revenue, uh, the total rev par uh, for a particular hotel, ADR and AUK. Um, then you look at the inventory and pickup numbers historically um, in going out. Um, that new rate column is the predicted, what the uh, predicted rate is, and that's to optimize the total room revenue at that hotel. So it may not necessarily be the lowest rate in the comp set, but it, it does a predictive model to, to figure out what the, the best blend is to offer, um, you know, the market. And then it also gives you the ability to put in comments. Um, so if, you know, you need to override that rate or you know that the rate is a little bit off, um, I could actually put in comments and the system will store those comments with that date and with that new rate column. Um, so I can go back and look at historicals. Um, then the next section over, we brought in information from Rate Shop, which of course is an automated uh, feed that we, we would get um, that shows you the competitor's information. And then over on the, the right-hand side is STAR, uh, both the monthly and, and the daily um, and the weekly information from STAR. Uh, I've been looking at last year as well. So some additional um, use cases that we've uh, tackled within Hospitality Insight. Um, daily cash receipts. Um, we've actually created a, an entire reporting uh, workbook um, that your night auditors can fill out on the web um, with all types of information that needs to go from the hotel to the corporate. Um, whether it's accounts receivable aging comments, whether it's a cash reconciliation, whether it's uh, recording the daily cash receipts uh, to audit information, uh, you name it. Uh, we've also created some input templates for some of the statistical information that may not be recorded in any system yet. Um, we, we can easily create a, a template um, on the web that the hotels can actually key in that information. The minute they key it in, it's consolidated and rolled up, and then we can utilize that information for reporting purposes and create additional uh, key performance indicators based off of, you know, whether it's FTEs, whether it's, um, you know, number of people, um, you know, in the lobby, what have you. Um, you know, we can, we can use that information. And we've also done... Um, Financial reporting, so income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, operating reports, um, daily sales, uh, daily cash reports. Uh, we've done staff scheduling, um, so that's based on um, your, your flex budget um, and the um, room occupancy um, as, as it's forecasted. So that scheduling will flex with the uh, projected room sold for the day and will tell you how many um, you know, room attendants you need, um, et cetera. And then we can also bring in data from social media. Um, so if you want to get some of that feedback from Twitter, um, et cetera, you can import that in and we can um, put that in. And we can also do uh, guest satisf satisfaction uh, scoring um, as well and bring that into a reportable solution so that you can look at you know, the scores um, across your uh, portfolio. All right, so how is Hospitality Insight different from any of the other products out there? And, and there are a lot of products, and, and, and we know um, there are. Um, number one, I would say, is the flexibility. Um, this product um, is being used across the world and has been used across the world since the 80s um, in many different industries. So it is very flexible in what you can do with it. It's really, it's a platform that we have built a framework for the hospitality industry. We've, we've built kind of the base for hospitality. Um, but we have some customers that have taken that base and then they've run with it. Um, and they've got hundreds of users um, on the system doing all types of things from 
HR uh, to operation uh, reporting uh, to obviously forecasting, budgeting, um, but you name it. Basically, anything that you're using Excel for now, we could build in this model, um, have it collect the data, consolidate it, roll it up, and then have an interactive dashboard and a report sitting on top of that. Um, reporting and modeling can be done either in the web front end, um, which we'll look at, um, as well as the Excel front end, which we will also touch on. Uh, the pricing of, of this product is very advantageous, especially on the cloud. It's per user per month. Um, it's a very easy pricing model. Um, not a whole lot of upfront investment to it. Um, you can bring in many data sources. Some of those products that are out there, yeah, you can bring in the PMS and POS systems, but if you want to bring in anything else, um, you can't. Or you'll have to manually bring it in from a spreadsheet. This system, Hospitality Insight, is fairly agnostic to the data source. So as long as we can get at either a text file, a CSV file, an Excel spreadsheet, um, a data feed, um, a database connection, uh, we can import the data. Um, it doesn't have to be in the same format for all locations. We can have multiple uh, jobs running for the different formats, um, etc. cetera. Um, if you're interested in getting more information about that um, or you have specific PMS, POS systems that you want to talk about, let us know, um, and we will definitely address that with you guys. Um, but you know, finally, the advantage is, you know, it's the power and support of IBM. This, this is an IBM product. It's, like I said, it's been around since the 80s. Um, it will be around for many, many years to come. Um, this, this is being used for thousands and thousands of companies across the world. Um, and the, the, the product behind Hospitality Insight is not going anywhere. Okay, so talk a little bit about our use case um, that we're going to talk about today. Um, we had a hospitality client. Um, it was one of the top five hotel property management companies in the, the world. Um, they actually had over 200 uh, hotels that they were managing at the time. Um, and they had hotels at different levels, right? So some of them were, um, you know, uh, full service. Um, some of them were select service. Um, some of them were, you know, like extended stays. Um, but what they, the issue that they were having is they were doing a monthly forecast, their ownership, uh, companies that they had to report to demanded that a forecast be completed twice a month. Um, and at the time they had over 200 hotels. Um, so what they were doing, um, before we, we helped them out is they were using, uh, Microsoft Excel, they were completing 200 spreadsheet templates at corporate uh, twice a month. They would fill out the information for their actuals up until that day that they were create the templates were created. They were putting in the budget and the prior forecast um, in those templates. They were sending email out all 200 of those out to the field. Everyone in the field would then have just a couple of days to complete their forecast review it with their regional manager. And then at that point, the forecast templates were so big that they would have to FTP each one of those spreadsheets up to an FTP site, which then corporate would then have to uh, bring them down. So this is a kind of a visual example of what was going on here, um, which obviously created bottlenecks for everyone, right? Uh, mainly corporate, you know, corporate had basically a staff of degreed accountants um, that all that they were doing on a monthly basis was kind of filling out templates with numbers from historicals, filling those out, rolling them out to the FTP site or, or emailing them out, then bringing everything back together and reconsolidating everything. And if you can imagine the consolidation spreadsheet that they would get back in, they'd have to link to all 200, 200 plus uh, 
uh, spreadsheets. If somebody added a row or a column, it, it just took forever. Um, so basically those accountants had no time to really look at the information. Um, it was also taking them obviously a long time to do. Um, and so by the time the forecast would actually be completed, it would almost be time to start the next one. Um, so it's very frustrating. And then God forbid there be a change that needed to make it, be made at corporate. The whole process would have to start over again, and they'd have to quickly go through that process. So it, it was a mess. So uh, what we did is we came in and we created, um, uh, we implemented the Hospitality Insight um, templates for them, the framework. Um, and what we did is we created, uh, using the IBM Planning Analytics platform, a, um, a budgeting and forecasting and financial reporting solution. Um, it was all online. Um, so they would go, the hotels would then go to a website. Um, they would go and open up the workflow module, um, which we're showing up at the top screen. It would show their hotel um, and show whether they had started the budget, they were in progress, or they had actually completed it, which would indicate a green uh, circle next to it. Um, and they could go in right there on the screen, uh, update their budget forecast, and submit it right there on the screen. Uh, it was in instantaneously consolidated, so corporate could see the numbers immediately. There was no you know, emailing spreadsheets back and forth or, or uploading them to an FTP site. Uh, we were also bringing the actuals every day so they could see the rolling forecast on a day-by-day -day basis. And this actually became a... A, like a checkbook program for them. Um, their rolling forecast would show the actuals through um, that day. So they can kind of see on an account by account basis where, whether they were going to hit their forecast on the expense side. Um, they could also see the, the up-to-date revenue um, as well from the previous day as it got posted. Um, so it, it was, it ended up being very beneficial for all of the, um, the GMs at the hotels. Um, this is an example of another one of the screens um, that we did kind of at a, at a roll-up level. So after they keyed in their daily uh, room revenue by segment, it kind of rolled everything up. Everything with a gray background um, is, uh, is a rolled-up value. It's calculated. It cannot be changed. Anything with a white background um, was actually open for this user for data entry. Um, but we were automatically calculating rolling up uh, basically the total room sold, the occupancy percent, the ADR, and then comparing that to budget last year and giving them a variance to both. On the expense side, we had uh, different uh, screens for each department. Um, so here's a, a snippet from the rooms department. Um, as you'll notice, all of these accounts are driven um, by a, a driver. So if you look at that first line, it says clerks and cashiers, it's driven by dollars per occupied room. Um, that dollars per occupied room is based on this uh, $2.48 uh, rate here, um, which when you key that in, it, it calculates 54.21 based upon the occupied rooms for the month that we were looking at. Um, and then these other columns will tell you what you did last year. Well. So now we're going to jump to the demo. Uh, we're going to do a quick demo of a couple of dashboards um, in the, the workspace of Hospitality Insight, um, and then we'll jump back and, and get some additional information. Um, so uh, for our examples today, we're going to go over two uh, workbooks that I've created. So these over here, they're, they're called books, um, and a book is just a collection of either reports that I've created, um, maybe in Excel, um, they may be a dashboard. Um, they may be documents that I need to, um, you know, do for a business process, etc. Um, in this case, I've created uh, two different types of dashboards. One is a corporate dashboard, and one is kind of a general, uh, you know, a, a hotel dashboard. Uh, so we're going to jump directly to the corporate dashboard. Again, this is completely customizable. Um, so we, we've created some of the visualization types that you can see on the dashboard. 
this data is all live, um, so it is read-write. So if I've got security access to update the numbers, I can actually do it right here from the screen. Or as numbers are getting loaded into the system, um, I will see those reflect um, on this web page um, when I refresh or recalculate. Um, these boxes up at the top, they're selectors, um, so I can drag different selectors up here. Um, if I change, let's say, what maybe what I'm looking at, instead of looking at the north region, um, I want to look at, um, you know, maybe total or a different region. Let's figure out a total LPA lodging here. Um, you notice all of the graphs and the numbers on the screen will automatically change and rescale to the data that I've uh, selected. Um, as well as I can change the year and look at additional information um, as well. Okay, here I can look at different months. So instead of total year, I may mean, want to look, just look at March. Maybe I want to go back and look at um, instead of the North region, uh, maybe I want to look at the West region. Okay. Um, you also have the ability on any of these to change the visualization. So if I wanted to, um, I could actually come up here and say, I don't like this bar chart. I can click on it and select a different visualization, and maybe I want to do a pie chart instead. Okay. Um, when I save that version, um, it would be saving a copy of that to my personal uh, uh, saving area, which we saw just a minute ago. Um, so, unless you have administrative rights, you cannot update the template uh, or the, you know, in this case, the dashboard that everybody's looking at. So I can I can customize this uh, to my own liking. I would just need to save it as, um, you know, my own copy, and the system will prevent you from doing. Um, other than that, um, you also have the ability to drill down as well on any of these, and I'll show you that here in a minute. So here, you know, we can see we kind of plotted the information. Um, down uh, below, we, we know that we've got some information here. Let's look at, we're going to look at the total company now. We're going to look for 2016, um, and we're going to look for the total year. Okay. So I'm going to change all of this data on the screen. And we're going to come down here, and we're going to look at the map. Okay, the map right now is plotting, in this case, RevPar uh, by state. So I've got operations in the states that are shaded. Okay, um, I can change that account that I'm looking at to either a predefined list, or I could, you know, go to all of my accounts that are available. If I click on this button, um, let's look at gross profit. Let's look at gross profit by state. You notice the chart and graph um, changed automatically. Um, and I could actually come down here and click on this state of Oregon. I could see what the dollar amount is, or I could drill down um, and see um, additional information if, if I had it um, in this case. Um, uh, and I'll show you on the map. You can actually drill down. It would actually show the locations in that state. Um, if I go to the room revenue tab, Again, I can look at uh, this is you know hard coded to total revenue by state um, for the time period that you're looking at. Um, this is a different type of visualization. It's called a word uh, word cloud. Um, so the colors of the words uh, depend on which series you're looking at. So the blue, in this case, the blue is forecast, the green is budget, and then the size and relativity of those the of the words um, are based on the dollar amounts. So obviously, Colorado and Massachusetts, I have the biggest forecast ADR, um, and it looks like uh, probably North Carolina, Oregon are the smallest forecasted um, ADR um, locations. Again, I could change up. Um, how this is, is looking. And maybe I just want to look at it by a, a chart. Okay. And I could easily do that. And maybe you want to look at, okay, show me the individual um, hotels in Florida or show me the individual hotels in North Carolina. Okay. So I can easily do that or I can switch it back to um, 
a map. And maybe I don't like the colors on that map. Um, so I can come over here um, and actually change um, the colors on that map. So I'm going to come and select that map and go to my uh, color palette. And maybe I like that one better. Okay. So I can customize this any way I want to and save my copy uh, without impacting anybody else's uh, information or, or, or template. Okay. Um, if we go back here, um, let's say I want to drill down on RevPAR by the North Region. Um, it's, this is already actually already drilled down. Uh, but it tells me it's $15.33 for the North Region. And these are the hotels within that North Region already. Um, or I could change it up and um, hide my overview. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to change the regions that are showing here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick the North, South, West, and East. Apply. There we go. And let's say I want more information on that south region. All that I need to do is click drill down. Okay. So it, it kept the south region and then it gave me the, the hotels within that south region um, as additional detail for RevPAR. And maybe if I want to now change that to I'm looking at something else, I can easily change um, you know, to anything else. So um, you know, any of the accounts that I've got available. Maybe look at um, net income. So we'll pick net income and we'll replace that. So I've got no net income for 18. Back to 16 of June. Okay, so now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change, um, maybe we're going to look at AUK now. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say I want to look at uh, the list of default accounts. Um, so the system will automatically pick that um, and I'll come down here and I want percent occupancy sold. Okay, so I'm going to apply and close. Now I can see the additional um, information, so it changed it to a percentage. Um, so I can see, you know, which hotels uh, within that region um, are doing better than the others. Um, and if I needed to resize this, um, I, I could do so as well. Um, but again, it's it's this is information and in, in a format that you want uh, to keep. Um, and it, any changes that you make to it will not impact the the default uh, version that's out there. I could also zoom in, uh, zoom out as well to see additional information. Okay. Um, jumping to the other uh, example that we had, um, this is actually a dashboard um, that we created uh, for the properties. Um, this is actually modeled in Excel, um, so you could consume this in the Excel front end um, as well as the web front end, obviously. Um, the intent is that the hotel would come in when they select it, uh, based upon their security, would automatically bring up their hotel's information um, or the hotels that they've got security access to see. Um, I can come in here and change uh, that information uh, based upon, uh, you know, whether I've got security access to see another hotel um, and if it's got data um, or not. Um, and then I could change the location that, or sorry, the um, the month that I'm looking at as well. It will automatically change and repull the data uh, based upon um, the information that's been loaded into the system, and it's it's up to date. So I'm going to go back to May 2018. I can see you know what's been posted in the system, um, and I can see you know week. By week basis, days one uh, through seven. 
across the board, my uh, forecast, my budget, my variances, etc. Um, so this is a useful report. And again, we can we can tweak it um, any way you need to. We can also create commentary sections. Um, so you can have the hotels go in, look at their variances. They can um, comment on those variances. Um, they can also copy this. They can export it to um, Excel as well um, if they want to. They could print it off in PDF um, as well. Um, the room revenue uh, tab in this case um, shows some uh, information um, for the other locations in the area. Again, this is based on security. Um, so you know, if I've got access to see my comps, um, either within my company or maybe the star information that we brought in, um, we, can, we can show that based upon the security. If I'm a corporate user, obviously I can see all the properties uh, within the, the, um, the environment. Um, so I can see all of these uh, by default. Uh, but this is just a little bit different um, graphing techniques. These were actually done in Excel, um, and so they're, but they're dynamic when you import them in. Um, and make them be part of this Hospitality Insight uh, framework. So the actual budget, in, in this case trend, trend lines uh, will, will change. So here if I wanted to change from May uh, 2018, updated. Um, so now we're going to jump to the Excel interface. Um, so I'm going to minimize this web page. I'm going to go create a new workbook here start from scratch <clears throat> and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to um, go to my IBM planning analytics menu uh, this is the add into Excel so you get this menu that comes in with Excel um, I can even click this exploration button um, it will drag and drop um, items from the screen um, into a visualization over here. So we're going to start with, I know that my data is mainly in the monthly cube, um, which is all stored at a monthly basis. Um, I can come in here and look at that information. Um, so I want maybe the version to be shown on the columns. Um, I want the company to be shown on the rows. Um, so I'm going to drag that up here. The versions that I actually want to show, I'm going to edit those and I'm going to bring in my actual budget and forecast. I'm going to replace what I've got there. Um, so I've got the properties uh, running down. Um, I'm going to change this up. I want to show the names of those properties. So you can come here and say, give me the company name of those properties and I'm going to apply those and then I'm going to come up to account and I'm going to drag account up to the top um, I want to uh, simply um, pick one particular account that I want to look at so here we're going to come in and edit that and I'm going to pick uh, maybe we'll look at um, default list here. Maybe we'll look at the um, look at income summary. We'll drill down. We'll look at GOP. Okay. And then for the time period that we're going to look at, maybe let's bring that into the versions as well. And we're going to bring in, in this case, I want to look at 2016 and 17 only. So at, at the year totals, I want to look at roll-ups. Do that. And then my measure, finally, I'm going to drag that up to the top. And I tell it whether I want to look at dollar amounts or comments or units. Um, so in this case I want to bring in amount. Okay. So it's going to query the system. Um, 
and can come in here and optionally get rid of the zero records um, that it finds. Um, so I can, I, can, I can do that here. I can come to Planning Analytics. I can expand. I can collapse. Um, I can do you know various different types of things. If I want to suppress uh, the zeros, I can suppress the rows and the columns that are zeros. So it's going to get rid of um, anything. Um, let's say suppress zeros only, or uns no suppression at all. Um, so I can slice and dice this information any way I want to. Um, let's say I wanted to, you know, uh, bring in uh, multiple accounts for each property. Um, I could click that count and drag it right over here, and then maybe change up what I want to show on that. Maybe I want to show gross operating profit plus. Um, let's look at something else. Let's go one of the. Uh, maybe a look at also the average daily rate as well. Okay. So if there's data, it's going to show it um, on a you know side by side basis. Um, and then once once I've got it kind of the way I want it, um, I can then uh, change this into um, an existing uh, new uh, spreadsheet. Um, I'm going to do dynamic report on a new sheet. Um, so it basically creates an Excel template for me. Um, so these are formulas that are uh, written back to the cube. Um, again, I can, you know, zero suppress. I can add additional columns at this point if I want to. This, you know, it's an Excel spreadsheet. I could publish this for use. Um, I could add rows, whatever I wanted to do at this point. But these formulas are linked back to the system, um, and I can come back and change maybe what I'm looking at um, for any one of these. Let's say I wanted to change this column to now 2019, right? I just change the year, and it's. So now we're going to start with our question and answers section. Um, please, if you've got any questions, uh, please enter them into the chat window. I don't think we're going to have a chance to get to everyone's uh, question before the end of our time. Um, so if, if we don't get to your question, um, we will get back to you in the next day or so with a personalized answer. Um, so please make sure you, you uh, type in those questions in the, in the chat window. Uh, first question I'll answer is, how does the pricing work? Um, is the pricing model the same for on-premise versus cloud? Um, the pricing model for, for cloud is very easy. It's per user per month. Uh, we have a question a lot of times that comes up. If, what if I've got some users that only need access for a month or two during the year, maybe to do budgets? Um, do I have to pay for licenses for those users for the entire year? The answer is absolutely not. Uh, you would contract for your base number of users that would need access all the time uh, for those months that you would uh, ramp up the usage. Uh, you can add those additional users. You can get charged for the additional users <clears throat> during that time period. And then you would deactivate those users at the end of the that time period and your um, billing would go back to the normal amount. It's a very easy pricing model. Uh, for on-premise, it's a little bit more complex. Uh, there's a server um, in-house that, that would be involved, and depending on what type of server you're going to put it on, et cetera, it affects the pricing. So we would need to get uh, with you individually um, and, and get you pricing for the on-premise uh, software pricing. But please reach out to us. And we'd be happy to do that. Um, what's the cost of a hospitality insight? Really, a Hospitality Insight is a framework that we've developed. Uh, we implement that for you and kind of take that blueprint and adapt it to your particular chart of accounts, your properties, maybe your unique calculations, your unique reports that you want to build. Um, it's based on time and materials, so based upon what you want to do with the software, uh, we would give you an estimate on what it would take to actually implement that. There is no additional cost for the Hospitality Insight um, framework itself. Um, we would just uh, build time and materials to implement it for you. Um, and then what are the differences between the cloud and the on-premise version? 
Essentially, the base software is exactly the same between cloud and on-premise. Uh, cloud does offer you, uh, of course, the latest and greatest um, versions as they're released. Um, IBM will do that for you automatically. Um, you also get some integration and automation tools uh, free of charge with the cloud. And you also get a subscription to Watson Analytics, which gives you predictive capabilities and ways to analyze and uh, look at your data using natural language queries. Um, done a separate webinar on that, uh, which is available at lpa.com um, if you're interested in seeing that for the hospitality industry. Um, next question is, how is the back end put together? Essentially, the, the Hospitality Insight base framework is comprised of three main areas, a uh, daily, a monthly, and a payroll. Uh, the daily, we can do um, almost an entire P&L at the daily level based upon how things are being posted during the month. Um, actual budget forecast, uh, we can add additional you know, projections, different versions of forecasts, etc. Um, and then the monthly, uh, which would have everything in it, uh, you know, full P&L, we can do a full cash uh, flow statement, uh, full balance sheet if you want to do that in there um, at the monthly level. And then the payroll uh, cube uh, basically has all the payroll information, actual budget forecast, etc., uh, down to the position level within each department. So if you have the, the need to actually do like flex budgeting, um, you know, driver based budgeting, forecasting versus actuals on a position by position basis within your hotels, we can easily do that in that payroll area and then link everything together. So from a reporting perspective, the users um, see everything in one location, one, one particular interface, um, and then we kind of build the back end and, and, and bring everything together. Um, probably the last question I think we're going to have time for is how technical does a person have to be uh, to be able to administer this and, and do development in it? Great question. Um, it can look daunting. We do this demo a lot for, for different industries. Um, when it comes down to it, if you have good Excel knowledge and you know your data very well, you're going to do great at this. Um, my background is in accounting and finance. Um, I'm not an IT person at all. Um, I picked this up in about a week um, initially. And uh, that's kind of what we do with our clients. We come in, we train them for uh, three to four days at the beginning of the project. Um, and then the intent is as we're doing the project, as we're completing the project, uh, someone from your team is actually working with us and they're building that, that knowledge throughout the project. Of course, you know, you know your, your data better than anybody. So by the end of the project, you're an expert in both the system, Hospitality Insight, as well as your data, um, and then you become a superstar. Um, we've also done projects as well uh, where we can come in and, and do the training up front and then mentor you through the project. Um, so maybe it's a milestone-based consulting um, engagement where we come in and do you know, a week workshop, uh, get you guys started, and then we give you a month or so to get things done, and then we come back and we have another workshop to either finish off things that weren't done or move on to the next piece, and that works very well too. But uh, in the end, you don't need a strong IT background at all. Uh, you don't need to know databases. You don't need to know any of the technical server specifications or anything like that. It's mainly business rules and business functions. Um, you know, for instance, uh, how do you calculate occupancy percentage? Uh, you know, what is your definition of occupancy percentage? Um, you know, um, what is RevPAR? Uh, things like that. And so you're, you're going and modifying those calculations. Um, you know, your management fees accounts. You know, what do you want? Which accounts do you want to include in a P&L line for management fees? Uh, that type of thing is, you know, you would need to know. Not technical at all. Um, so we teach you the, the, the limited technical stuff that you need to know about Hospitality Insight and the rest of it you, you already know about your data. Okay, we are out of time for any additional questions. Um,
If you do want to follow up and, and get additional information, please go to hospitalityinsight.lpa.com. On that page, you'll find some customer testimonials as well as additional information about Hospitality Insight and some of the things that you can do with it. Um, as well as we are offering a free customized demo with your data. We would do that live. Uh, so if, you, if you're interested in that, please reach out to sales at lpa.com. We'll arrange for you guys to send over some uh, maybe forecasting, budgeting, and actual data. We can bring that into the Hospitality Insight Framework and then give you a customized demo on what that may look like for your organization. Uh, please, uh, yeah, if you do want to uh, follow up on that, please sales at lpa.com. We'd be more than willing to do that for you. Uh, thank you for your time. We pr really appreciate it. Um, if you've got any additional questions, please let us know, and we'd be happy to help. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to...